421 in English, we find it on our handout page 14, part 3. To you who would like more money, love, status and fame, heaven and earth give, air gives, water gives, plants give, animal gives, human give, all things give them gives give of themselves to each other. It's only within this reciprocal giving that we can survive, regardless of whether we are thankful for it or not. There is no need to complain about. There's nothing we need to complain about. Nobody was granted life due to their personal merit, and no one can live just by using their own strength. But nonetheless, we are all still only concerned with our own pocketbook. Study means being preoccupied with our own body. Wisdom says, I am what I am, no matter how, th how things end up. The person outside of the way is someone who only thinks of gain and loss. A devil is someone who makes a profit of, of this. What a bore, making a long face and complaining about having no money, nothing to eat and being stuck in debt. It's only because you believe that you have the right to, to revel in life and always feel good that you mourn and groan about your poverty. Once during the war I visited the coal mine. With the same outfit and headlamp as the miners, I got into the lift and down we went. At one point when we were going down, it seemed to me as if suddenly we were going up again. But when I looked with the lamp at the wall of the shaft, I saw that we, are st we were still going down. In the beginning when we were accelerating downwards, uh, we could really feel that we are going downwards. Just when the velocity changed, it seemed to us as if we were going up again. In exactly the same way, when we think about our lives, we always go wrong when we mistake the fluctuation amounts for the sum. Saying you have had satori is just an interpretation of changing circumstances. As a saying, you are lost in illusion. Saying good is an interpretation of change. Saying bad is another. Rich is an interpretation, poor another. It's, it's self-evident that a poor man suffers less from his poverty than someone who was rich until a moment ago. Illusion means not being able to recognize the seriousness of the situation. Although you are really not so hungry, you say you've got nothing to eat and that alone makes you hungry. Words made for nightmares. Everyone makes a big deal over words. I taught my parrot to say, I'm doing fine. One day the lamp and everything caught fire. Flapping his wings furiously, my parrot cried out his last words. I'm doing fine, I'm doing fine. <laughs> and died. We are constantly being misled by our own body and mind, and we don't even realize it. In the impermanent world, we try to get forward with our name wherever we can. Yet, aren't we all born naked? Only afterwards did we get our name, our jumpers and our nipple. Once we are big, we suddenly appeal to our importance, strength, intelligence or wealth, just to make a name for ourselves. And all along, we are only naked. What we construct as the world is nothing more than a mirage in the desert or a palace made out of ice. At another time, at a, in another place, it would all melt away. Hell dwellers, hungry ghosts, animals, fighting demons, humans and heavenly beings. The inhabitants of all of these six worlds are where they are according to the measure of their blood congestion. When the blood congestion sinks, that's Buddha. Good and bad karma from the past appears in this moment as karmic perception. As we all observe the world through this karmic perception, 
it seems to us like a demon's world, like an animal world, like a hellish world. But we are looking at one and the same thing. Everybody sleeps in the bed of Buddha nature and only dreams their illusion. Amita Buddha says, everything is good as it is. There isn't a single lost being. There is no reason to get excited. The lost beings cry out, no, that's not how it is. Having the mind of the way means forgetting yourself for the others. Forgetting the others for yourself means not having the mind of the way. Losing is Satori. Winning is illusion. The difference between yourself and others disappears only when you completely give yourself up for the others. That's what it means to save the others before yourself. you yourself are saved. Not coveting a single thing is the greatest gift you can give to the universe. The world in which everything is given without having to ask for it offers a perspective which is cool and clear, wide and unlimited. Completely different from a perspective in the world of every man for himself. The reason why Buddha takes on so many different forms is because out of compassion he cries tears of so many different forms. Buddha's compassion is different from my, from mere pity. His compassion provides a purge from which we cannot fall, no matter how we may stumble. Big mind means Buddha mind. It means living 24 hours a day without grabbing onto a single thing. It means not hanging onto the conventions of the world. So, so first um, the title to you who would like more money, love, sales and fame. So I choose some uh, sayings from Kurosawaki and um, yeah, so for me the title uh, it's like um, when, we, when we collect more money, more love, more status and fame we increase this, this kind of separated self, what we think we are. And this kind of kind of separation and the me, we made much even bigger and bigger and bigger. And we live a, li and we live a life that's, that's a kind of an ideal life. We, we, we think we are this, we think so we get, we, we, we walking, we doing something like, a, yeah, so living in our dream world. So that's why I think it fits good. Uh, maybe that's why yeah, the, the title could fit to that. That uh, yeah, when we collect all these things, we separate uh, ourselves from others, and uh, yeah, we live and keep an illusion. So the first saying I choose um, is the first one: Heaven and earth give, air gives, water gives. Plants gives, animal gives, human gives. All things give themselves to each other. It's only within this, this reciprocal, reciprocal giving that we can survive, regardless of whether we are thankful or not. Um, so that's exactly, so here he, he describes the world, how it is. Like everything gives, everything gives. Like in the title says, you want more money and love and fame. So you, when you would more like to have more money, and, uh, more money and status and fame, yeah, you wouldn't recognize that because yeah, you make yourself bigger than the others. You want to make yourself so you separate, and you and you don't see that everything actually give. Even you, you are kind of connected, so you cannot. Yeah, it's. It's very hard to you to see it when you when you when you live like you want more and more and more. So in this saying, yeah, he he's describing this 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 world we live in, uh, this interconnected world we live in, and uh, and this world is still there even if we are not thankful for it. So even if we are not recognize it, it's still there. It doesn't matter actually if we recognize it, but. Uh, maybe it's better for us if we recognize it. Um, 
So similar to this saying, there is, a, there is a, the third one. Nobody was granted life due to their personal merit, and no one can live just by using their own strength. But nonetheless, we are still only so concerned with our pocketbook. So here is he is just repeating then no one can live just by using their own strength that what we just heard uh, in the first saying and that everyone is just concerned with their pocketbook um, and he, he here he he is um, also adding uh, that nobody was granted life due to their personal merit he's adding that uh, even that the the fact that you are born uh, it's just kind of, uh, you you have nothing to to do with this uh, right. when you live you have something like an ego you, you, which want a lot of things but in the beginning you couldn't decide to, to to be born to to be on this world it just happens because a lot of things just coming together and still you live in this world, a lot of things coming together, but now you think, oh, now I'm, I'm very important. Uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm a separate one. You, you are there, I'm here, uh, I have nothing to do with you. I think with these sayings, he's, 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 he's pointing at this, that we, of this separation, which we are not seeing usually. So, but the interesting thing is also why do we feel so separated, so um, or so special? Uh, because also we have things we cannot change. What we talked yesterday about, like the, our consciousness. This world is kind of we create this world by ourselves. It's what I see. Is it's my world. It's not your world. You have a totally different world. Um, but th this kind of consciousness, what we have, uh, I think, makes this separation. What what we kind of what we feel. Uh, on the one hand, there is no separation, but still, I, we have our consciousness, my, my, my thoughts, and everything. We, I cannot separate with you. So, I think this is a big reason why we feel this this separation. So we are separate. We feel separate because we have this unique consciousness. Um, and and uh, Sawaki on the next saying, he's saying, he, I think he, he's pointing to this consciousness, this unique consciousness, by saying, uh, "What we construct as a world is nothing more than a mirage in the desert or a place made out of ice. At another place, in another time, it would all melt away." So we construct something as a world, as my world. But as soon as we are not here anymore, this world is gone. It's not existing anymore. So now I, s I have a lot of little sayings and um, I go, mm, that, that, that fit really good together. So also to this consciousness, another saying, what, what Sawaki is, uh, is saying is, uh, good and bad karma from the past appeared in this moment as karmic perception. As we all observe the world through this karmic perception, it seems to us like a demon's world, like an animal's world, like a hellish world. But we are looking at one and the same thing. So here again, he points out that we have our own own view of, of the world. Um, and the reason why we have our own view is our karma. So karma would be our, our, our experiences we made out of, because we live in a certain circumstances we have a 
certain character and that's why we have uh, our unique experiences and out of these we build uh, up our own worldview and uh, yeah, this worldview will disappear when we die and uh, mm, and this worldview we have also um, yeah, is an obstacle to see these all of these things that are interconnected that we're all interconnected with each other. That's how I understand uh, these sayings. Mm. So another saying, that's a bit another context now, so this is on page 16. Also we are not very hungry. You say you have nothing to eat and that alone makes you hungry. Words make for nightmares. Everyone makes a big deal over words. So Issa Vaki here suggesting, suggesting us to use less words. So in his um, example, he's saying, also we are not very hungry, you say you have nothing to eat, that alone makes you hungry. So the words he uses here are kind of negative words, he's saying, oh, I have nothing to eat. So this nothing to eat uh, points out of something that's lacking. So I understand this here, uh, we shouldn't, when something lacking, maybe we shouldn't uh, use words to to point our fingers to and um, maybe increase this kind of lacking what we feel. Why that? Uh, maybe this lacking we feel is also uh, like a... Yeah, we feel in this world, we feel like oh, there's lacking something, we, are, we, have, we don't have... Uh, we feel dissatisfied and it makes also a kind of separation you feel. You feel yourself you are here and then you have something and, and, and you miss something you want to have it from the outside and um, also again here uh, yeah you could also um, yeah point to this connection you you don't or you are your, your own separation you feel you you can increase by it by using like maybe like like negative words for example you increase your your, your felt uh, separation from from this from this world you are not the interconnectedness mm. so when you use words you usually um, also, when you use words in general, you, you you point out to some things in the phenomenal world, and uh, they are defined. This is this, this is that, this is this, this is that. So it's also a kind of separation you create with words. And uh, yeah, for me, it, it shows always to this kind of separation. Uh, We feel in our life and that makes the life so so miserable and we don't see this interconnectedness. And also the use uh, of, of positive words, so words that describe something lacking and words that describe something which enrich ourselves. Or yeah, expressing of a satisfaction. Um, they both produce a kind of, uh, I call it elusive awareness of separation of me and the outside world. But when you use like words that lacking something that maybe it creates a much bigger separation um, because you're so much in need of something. You, are, you, are, you, are, yeah, you make your suffering so big and 
maybe it could be something that he wants to describe as well. Um, So, for example, a simple, uh, simple example of the difference between positive and negative uh, like words you use also uh, you can experience in your body reaction. When you feel good and more relaxed, you're more connected. You feel more connected with everything. When, you're, uh, when you don't feel so good and when you feel tense, you are more disconnected to everything. Uh, for example, I, I love to do a lot of in Germany, a lot of Tai Chi, and it, yeah, mainly the main reason was uh, to feel connected with everything around myself. I hope my body was was more open, become more open, and I come become more relaxed, and I could more connected with everything. That prob pro probably doesn't mean that you never should be like tents or something like that but you can mm, but to feel this interconnectedness of everything maybe and yeah, go go a step somewhere beyond where you feel always the separation is uh, maybe don't What's how that, that's how I understand it. Don't uh, use these words that or don't make this feeling of something is lacking so big in, when you use words. Maybe. You make it even bigger when you use these words. Oh, I have nothing to eat. Oh, that's so bad. And maybe that's what he's pointing to. For example, in the Zen we said session, we have pain. We are also when when, when we have pain, so you felt very negative and and you feel very tense and and then you feel a strong like separation. You feel like oh, I'm here and the pain is there and uh, yeah. But yeah, what we don't do is we don't get up and relax and feel connected to everything. Um, what we try to do is uh, to accept it and letting go of the separation between, that's how I understand it, between you here and the pain there. We want to yeah, dissolve this kind of separation. Mm. <clears throat> so it's a bit maybe different approach to what when I do Tai Chi, I, do, I try to relax and open and feel the connection. Um, it's also, I could say, that's kind of, I feel connected more than before. I'm more in my head than I'm more in my body and relax and I feel more connected. And the Zazen way is a bit different. It goes like, yeah, like accepting your, your suffering, you know, like this pain, this, and accepting by um, the source is this, this, this separation between you here and there's something you are lacking, something you have pain. And I understand Sarvaki that when you some feel something is lacking, you increase it even more if you use words about it. Um, for example, he also is saying here that it's the second one that there's nothing we need to complain about. Nothing we need to complain about. Complaining would be also something we would say, oh, that's not, oh, this is not, oh, this is not. Yeah. Complaining would be something you, would, you wouldn't accept. The reality, how it is right now. You would always try to have the separation. And then he's pointing from another, from another side, there's another saying that he's pointing to, it's with the parrot. The parrot, uh, I taught my parrot to say, I'm doing fine. One day the lamb fell and with everything caught fire, flapping his wings furiously, my parrot cried out his last word, words, I'm doing fine, I'm doing fine, and died. So 
first he said uh, we shouldn't use words which shows the lacking which makes you more like separated and here I understand uh, we should even even if we die we should say I'm doing fine I'm doing fine I'm doing fine so this I'm doing fine maybe this it's more an approach to to accept what is here right now we don't create the separation but Maybe you still feel this resistance in you, but there is something when you do it, when you say I'm doing fine, that wants to accept everything and goes more in the direction of seeing the interconnectedness and not the separation. Um, so we should yeah, say more, I'm doing fine, I'm doing fine, even if we are. Yeah, if our ego or something is not doing fine yet. or even in the yeah, even in the in the event of dying because of the separation mm. Mm. yeah so this was my last um Saying, I was wanted to present to you. Please, if you have some question, feel free to ask. Um, so yeah, back to the uh, first chapter that you were talking about. You were talking about this point of uh, the difference between doing what you have to do mm -hmm. and doing what you want to do. Yeah. So say untidy it's maybe obvious what you have to do because yeah. you, know, you have to get up early, you have to do SAMU, you have to do your responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then, <coughs> at the end of the day, <coughs> you choose to be uh, untidy as well, so it's mm -hmm. like, you know, you don't have to be here, you yeah. want to be here. Yeah. So, I mean, for you, like, what would you say is the separation? Because then, I guess on the flip side as well, <coughs> people have things that they want to do, like, say, Oh, maybe I have to be untidy and do work. But maybe if I'm talking about what I'd like to do, I'd like to be in Osaka doing karaoke or something. But then it's like, <coughs> I don't know, maybe actually when you finish doing that, maybe that's, you know, that's, is that even something that you wanted to do really? Was it just like some sort of distraction or something kind of meaningless? So yeah, I'm, I'm curious to know what you think is the real distinction between something that you want to do and something that you have to do. I mean, what what he is, what how I, I how I understand Savaki here is when you when you do something you have to do, you have the opportunity to let go of want to do. When you when you do what you want to do, um, I mean, you do always what you want, and then you go there. Maybe you do this because you want that. Then you go there, and uh, maybe this. I mean, you can follow your personal preferences, but I don't, I'm not sure where your personal preferences will lead you at the end. Um, so, but when you would like to learn to let go of your personal preferences and see how this goes, uh, then it's a good opportunity here, I think. In these tasks you do, maybe you don't want to do, but you have to do it to let go of your preferences. Mm -hmm. this is, uh, to let go of these and see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, mm. I guess like what I'm thinking of is like where that like having to do things comes from, because essentially you're kind of you know you're in control of what you're doing more yeah. or less. You know, if you're here, you you choose to be here. So you, choose, yeah. you have this kind of personal, I must go to Antioch yeah, yeah, yeah. and be here and practice then. But then, yeah. you know, what is this having to do thing? Like, yeah, it could also be wanting to do, but then... Yeah, first you, you wanted to do and then you're here and then maybe you don't want to do anymore. But still you feel like, I don't you feel a need still to do it here. Maybe there is something you cannot explain why you come here. It's a feeling that's the right place to be, but then you're here and then you have all these tasks you have to do and 
And you feel like, but yeah, I decided to come here, but now I'm not sure if it's right. But yeah, I think the reason, I mean, you are here um, to learn this or to try to, to have a look in there, to, like, to, let, to let your own preferences go. And to kind of uh, and live this like the bodhisattva life. And to try to yeah, to give all of what you have here. And here it's a compared to outside, it's as I said, it's, I think a good opportunity. And you, yeah, you can try you have to have, you have to try it out yourself. Yeah. yeah. I, I just find it like an interesting separation mm -hmm. because I'm I think I do think about it and I'm, you know, I wonder what really is the difference. Because it's like also with like the thing with the parrot, it's like, you know, the parrot's like, oh, I'm doing fine, I'm doing fine. And like, I guess, you know, you have people in life who do everything they want to do. Oh, I, in the weekend I get really drunk and well, I, don't know, I can't remember anything or, you know, I don't know, I just like play a video game for like 50 hours and I, you know, that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, you know, do you really know what you want to do or are you just kind of doing things that feel good or... Like I remember once, because uh, I sometimes I find it hard to explain why I do Zazen sometimes. Like sometimes I think I know and sometimes I don't. But I was like talking to some people who are like my girlfriend's neighbours or whatever, and then they were kind of I don't know. I wasn't really talking about Zazen, but they kind of knew I'd start doing it and was going to come here. And then this girl was kind of like, "Oh, why would I want to do Zazen? I can just smoke a, a joint and <laughs> relax." <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know, it's like, okay, it's like, that's what you want to do, but like, yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. I guess, you know, people have things that they want to do, but then what is this thing that's like, oh, no, I have to do this, but oh, I just want to do this, I just want to smoke a joint, I don't want to do that, I then smoke a joint and be relaxed, but yeah, mm -hmm. I find like this separation always coming up, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, everybody has free choice what to do. Right? Mm. There will always be always be things you have to do. Maybe you cannot always say, "Okay, I do this, I do this." I know I have to do this because maybe I have a family or something. Mm. What you do then? And there is something you have to do. How do you? How do you deal with this situation? I guess, I mean, many people just don't have real responsibilities, maybe. So, like the way we live, most people live now is just kind of mm -hmm. just try to satisfy yourself as much as possible. But then these days, so many people are kind of depressed and yeah. don't know, really know what they're doing with their life. They kind of you hear this people saying this all the time. And, it's it's kind of like actually you have you can do most you know you can do more than people you know 100 years were ever able to dream of doing but then it's like you know is it yeah. really what you want to do oh you've done all these things now but you're depressed oh you've got so much money and had so much fun for like 10 years live like a rock star or something but then it's like yeah actually i've done everything i wanted to do but i don't know if i actually wanted to do it or not yeah, I don't know people, other people, you know, I mean, we are all different, so I felt at one point uh, I don't want to live like this I lived before. Mm. I want to change something because I felt it. Maybe some people, they feel a little bit, but then they do another thing and they forget it or don't care so much. So then each per persons are so different, so you cannot even, you cannot say this is the perfect way for you or for other people. I don't know. So I, I also ask myself why do why not everybody choose this kind of way or why am, am I doing choose this way? Mm. So it also to do something with myself how I perceive the world. I guess I perceive it very differently. Mm. Do you know that uh, metaphor of the sun who? gets lost um, that appears in the Lotus Sutra 
No, no. It's kind of a little similar to the story of the prodigal son that appears in, in, the, in the Bible. So there's a, uh, the son of a very rich man and he grows up in that house but for some reason he gets lost when he was still very young. Um, so the difference between the Bible story in the Bible, there's two sons and they grow up both until they're 20 or so. And then the younger son decides, I want my inheritance now. I want my money now and I'm going to leave and have fun. Um, and then after a while, uh, he loses all his money doing gambling and buying prostitutes. And uh, then he's tending to somebody else's pigs, but he realizes the food that the pigs eat eats the food that the pigs eat is so much better than the food that I eat and then he decides to return to his father and say uh, I have no right to call myself your son anymore but you can use me as a slave and then the father is so happy that his uh, son is back so that's the famous story from the uh, bible and the story from the lotus sutra goes like this so the son gets lost when he's maybe three or four years old so he doesn't remember his father, he doesn't remember the house and he's basically also uh, doing odd jobs or maybe even doing some criminal activities, stealing money from people uh, to survive and, and traveling all through India. And at one point he's passing through this village and there's a big house and he sees this rich guy standing in front of the house and he thinks, oh, Maybe I can steal something there. That's, that's, I see some Wellington boots sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> but, then, but then the rich guy, he, he's looking at him and hence he, the rich guy tries to approach him. And then, oh, oh, there's danger and he runs away. And what happens is the rich guy is actually his father. And he realizes, oh, that's my son who's been lost for 20 years, 30 years. Tries to grab him, but because the son thinks, oh, this guy realizes I'm a criminal and this guy knows that I want to steal for him. So, so he runs away. The rich guy sends some of his servants behind them and, hey, get this guy back here. Maybe you can job, offer him some jobs so, so he can do some roofing on the house or he can work as a gardener for me. And he can clean the toilets and offer him some good money. Um, and that's what they do and the son then says okay um, if you serve me food and I have a place to stay I'm willing to do whatever work you want me to do um, and I can leave anytime I want okay and, and they say okay you'll just just work here and so he gets his food he gets a place to sleep and, and he's happy about that and, and, and he has some work to do um, but of course, he doesn't enjoy the work. I mean, it's, he doesn't enjoy to clean the toilets, but he realizes he needs to do that. So he has um, his three meals a day and he has a place to stay. But then he gets used to the responsibilities. He has the gardens to, to care for and he cares for the cows and the pigs and, and, and for the house. And gradually he gets more responsibility. He gets promotions. He gets more money. Uh, at one point, he's basically the assistant to that rich guy. But still, I mean, he does it for the money and he does it for his status and he's proud that he's earned this position. And only when that rich guy is already very old and close to dying, he tells the man, well, actually, you did this not for the money or I didn't let you do that because you do so good work but actually you're my son this is your house this is your house um so i'm dying now please take care of your house as you always did all of these years but not because of the money or anything because it's your house it's your house it's always been your house it's just that you didn't realize it um and the story, in the story, I mean, the, the, the rich man stands for the Buddha. So we're all kids of the Buddhas. And we practice because we're Buddhas. We're Bodhisattvas already. But usually we don't think so. We go to a temple to, well, be able to practice a Zen and hopefully one day find Satori. And once I get Satori, 
then all my problems are solved and I might help others as well. But first I want my Satori and of course I want three meals a day and uh, if possible a room for myself and not share it with somebody who's snoring and so on and so on. And so I can basically the, 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 this um, question you ask, everybody comes to Antaiji by their own decision and they stay because they want to stay. But for some reason we have the feeling, well, I need to do it. I need to get up at four in the morning and I need to light up the stove. And if I'm the Tenzo, I need to cook for five days again. And I've been yelled at by Echo-san and there's a thank you son and, and, and all these crazy people I have to deal with. Um, It's a little bit like, well, just like in this story from the Lotus Sutra, or to use another example from a book that I've been just translating into, into German. Um, in that book, um, it's kind of a talk between a cat and a 14-year-old boy, and uh, they talk about life and everything. And basically what the cat tries to communicate is that that's life, there's no meaning in life. There are no rules for life. Basically the same as what uh, Sawaki said, uh, I think it was yesterday, that there's no rails, there's no rules. Um, and there's some people who get that and who just live like that, because they enjoy life, that they enjoy to live. And there's others who always need a meaning and who need rules and things that they should do and they shouldn't do. They need something from the outside. Otherwise, they have no foundation to live. And then in one of the talks with the cat, uh, there's the question of uh, good and evil. And uh, the cat says, well, only those people who don't have a foundation for them, there's good and evil, and they need to somehow motivate themselves to do good. And they need something that keeps them from, from doing evil. And so the boy asks, well, how about the other people that uh, for whom life is just enjoyable out of itself? Is it possible that somebody finds joy in hurting others? So is it possible that there's a person who just lives for the joy of living and he's still considered a bad person and the cat says well in theory yes but i think in in, in reality you will find that very seldom and to explain that he uses this uh, example of a father who teaches his kid to play chess and the kid is not so excited about learning chess from the father maybe the father loves chess but the kids would rather play soccer outside or whatever. So the father says, well, if you play with me and you win, I give you $5, whatever. Um, so the kid does it because of these, these $5. And uh, the kid does its best to, to learn the rules and, and everything, but it's still all about the money. So what's going to happen if, if the father kind of takes a break to go to the toilet, the kid might secretly move some of the pieces, so trying to win. So the kid would do anything because for the kid it's not about the playing the chess, it doesn't ha have fun in playing chess, but wants the money. And uh, well, the cat is basically me making the point yes but at one point at one point you might actually enjoy chess by itself hopefully and that's the idea that the father had that has the first there's this kind of how would you say this bait five dollars if you win but the father also of, of course hopes that his kid will finally discover the joy of just playing chess for itself and that's what we need to discover in life or with practice. Well, why do we do the Zen? Why do we get up early in the morning to sit for two hours? Well, because we want it. All we know it in theory, but at one point we start to think, well, I'm forced to get up. 
that's how I'm forced to do the ten, so I'm forced to practice. Um, so basically, when we have this feeling, oh, I need to do this, we're still like these kids, like, like, oh, I have to play chess. And we're trying to somehow cheat a little bit. When nobody's watching, we try to cheat a little bit, but still get our pocket money. Um, but the point we need to get to is to realize, well, we're playing chess here because for the fun, for the fun of the game. And then actually you need to even get one step further um, at one point when, when you discover the, the joy of playing chess or when you realize this is my house. I've been living in my house all the time. So of course I do the dishes. Of course I need to cook. Of course I have to wash the clothes because if I don't do it, who's going to do it? Those are my dishes. It's the food I eat. Those are my clothes. So it's not for the pocket money I'm doing that. And once you realize that when you get to that point, you need to get to the point of the father that at one point like what you everybody knows from the homepage and most people they love this saying you need to wipe your own ass that's what we say on the homepage everybody thinks they can do it but once they come to Antaisi they realize it's actually not so easy or yeah I want to wipe my ass but for me it means this it means something different for them than for other people and then you need to get to the point where you need to teach other people to wipe their own ass. So basically you're doing what the father does. Try to motivate them to also discover the joy of playing chess. And then often you have to actually pretend you're losing. Give them the feel of winning the kids so that they discover the joy without making it too obvious otherwise it wouldn't be really fun for the kids so so um or the same as with the story of the the father uh, in the lotus sutra like, like uh, in the lotus sutra they say well he actually he he put dirt on his face and 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 uh, helped his son cleaning the toilet to uh, cleaning the toilet so that the son wouldn't realize it's actually the father that, that's helping him realize oh he needs to clean the toilets because those are his toilets. So, so often then, once you discover the joy of playing chess, the next step is you need to help others to also dis discover the joy of just, of just doing it. And uh, sometimes you motivate them by offering them a little candy. Sometimes you have to slap their back a little bit. Uh, trying this, trying that. Sometimes you just silently give an example of how it's done. Mm. But yeah, I, I mean, the, the problem that you're talking about that you've been addressing, uh, we come here by our own decision, but then we fall into this trap that we feel we need to do that, although we would rather not. It's a little bit like this kind of son who's finally back home, but then he thinks, I'm used as a servant, and why don't I get more pocket money for all the work I do? And so why don't I have more responsibility? And why don't I get more respect for what I do? When in fact, he's just doing what's, what's the natural thing to do in his situation. Uh, and his father is even helping him with wiping his own ass. Like, like uh, what uh, Sawaki Roshi says here today, I mean, everything is given to us. We came naked onto the earth and still we're only uh, worried about what's in our purse and that's what we have here. How much can I get more? And do I get uh, the right amount of respect that I earned? I'm entitled to more than what I have. Well, but what are we entitled to? Um, that's probably also in that book, like uh, Sawaki Roshi said, well, if, if your mother had decided to abort you before you were born, 
you couldn't have ex complained about that. Nobody would have even realized. If you had died two years ago, nobody would remember you today. And, and now, now you say, I'm entitled to more respect and more attention, whatever. Yeah, yeah, but, but uh, it's funny that it is that way, but that's the way we function for, for, for some reason. For some reason. Other questions, comments? Oh, 